Hi, I'm Manuel Kepler from the Robotics and Mechatronics Center at the German Aerospace Center, DLR. I'm here to present our IRIS 2021 paper on analyzing the performance limits of articulated soft robots based on the ESPI framework with applications to damping and impedance control. Let me start with the motivation behind this work. Soft robots come in many shapes and can be broadly classified into two categories, Artic articulated soft robots and soft bodied robots. This work is concerned with articulated soft robots that have rigid bodies and elastic joints with either constant or variable stiffness. You might ask, why do we build soft robots? Compliant robots provide many benefits such as increased robustness against mechanical impacts as demonstrated here. Further, they have the potential for being highly energy efficient doing cyclic motions. And they are capable of highly dynamic and explosive motions. Last but not least, as argued by Pratt, they showcase good force fidelity and low output impedance. But these advantages come at a price, as we have to deal with a reduced mechanical bandwidth compared to rigid robots. Further, from the control point of view, we have to deal with challenges such as underactuation, unwanted intrinsic oscillatory dynamics, high mechatronic complexity, and achieving accurate end effector positioning is tough. Clearly, the goal is to drive such robots precisely without unwanted oscillations. Recently, we have developed a control framework called Elastic Structure Preserving or ESP Control, which is the basis of the present paper. Let me introduce the fundamental ideas behind ESP Control. Considering the link position as output, the spring acts as a low pass filter on the non collocated control input. Thus, as already pointed out by Pratt in his fundamental work on SEAs, the achievable link side control bandwidth is quite limited compared to rigid robots. With the situation becoming worse, the lower the mechanical joint stiffness. In our lab, we experienced that control approaches that significantly modify the plant dynamics are prone to show unstable behavior. This motivated the development of a control concept that aims at shaping the system dynamics to a minimal extent. In particular, the goal was to preserve the intrinsic elastic structure and preserve the intrinsic inertial properties of the system. Basically, in its first iteration, we wanted to keep the intrinsic compliance and just add damping on the links. Later, we then extended the ESP concept to end effect the impedance control. Let me briefly introduce ESP control on the basis of a single elastic joint with a linear spring. Then, the model is given by these two differential equations. Applying simultaneously the following state transformation, where eta can be considered as the new motor coordinate, and the following input transformation that relates the control input u with the virtual control inputs u1 and u2, then we have the following transformed model. Note that the structure of the series elastic joint is entirely preserved under this transformation. Clearly, the associated equations of motions have the same, for, same form as before the transformation. However, we now have an additional control input appearing on the link side, u1. This control input must obey some constraints, in particular, it must be sufficiently smooth. We can think of this transformed model as quasi fully actuated. Considering the Spong model for an articulated soft robot with series elastic actuators, we can apply the same idea. Applying a simultaneous change of states in control inputs allows us to treat the system as if fully actuated. The established link side control port now enables the adoption of impedance control techniques which plays a crucial role for the developments in our current work.
how to continue from here. In our previous works, we used this link site control input to implement link site damping and to implement link site impedance behavior as shown here. The robot you can see is DLR David, which is implemented with variable stiffness actuators in all its joints. The two videos show the implementation of the link site impedance behavior via the ESP framework. As you can see, different interaction stiffness values can be realized by rendering the system nicely damped. However, in situations of harsh impacts, we realize that the injection of a damping behavior directly on the link side requires high actuator torques at the moment of impact. Here, just at the moment of impact, we can see this spike in the control input. In our current paper, we analyze the underlying reasons in detail. Revisiting the input transformation, we see that the implementation of a link side damper through the virtual control input U1 requires feedback of the link jerk signals since the second time derivative of U1 is required for the implementation of the input transformation. An important property of the SPOG model is that the jerk signals can be computed without numerical differentiation and we see that the jerk signals depend on the time derivative of the external forces. As a consequence, during harsh impacts when the external forces vary quickly, the jerk signals grow large. In fact, when the external forces assume a step-like variation, the jerk signals grow unbounded. This is the reason for the control input spikes we saw in the previous video. As argued in the paper, this limitation concerning the implementation of link set damping is not specific to the ESP control. In fact, this limitation is a manifestation of the physical fact that the link side torque bandwidth of articulated soft robots is fundamentally reduced compared to fully actuated robots. For example, we would face the same issues when implementing link side damping through a joint torque tracking controller, since it would also rely on feedback of the link jerk signals. Inspired by the human muscle tendon system and the design of shock absorbers, our paper proposes alternative damping designs that are based on dynamic extensions, where the damper is decoupled via an elastic element. Let me present the physical intuition that motivated this idea. Without a doubt, when you find yourself in a scenario like this, a well-tuned damper is your best friend. The last thing you want at the moment of impact is a sharp increase in impact force. This, however, would be the case if we would implement our shock absorber with a spring and linear damper in parallel. As we have previously seen, based on the input transformation, a sharp increase of the link side force translates into immense actuator torque requirements. However, by decoupling the damper element with an additional spring, we low pass filter the damper force, thereby resulting in a significantly, significantly smoother impact force. In conclusion, by connecting a decoupling spring to the damper, we can low pass filter the damper force and thus mitigate the shock arising from the impact. The candidates shown follow this idea. Other authors, for example, Stramigioli, Kelly, and Ortega, used dynamic extensions already in previous works to eliminate the need of velocity feedback for the control of rigid robots. However, to the best of our knowledge, such dynamic extensions have not yet been used in the context of enhancing the damping behavior of an underactuated compliant robot. In fact, the gain design required for our purpose of reducing the actuator torque spikes during impacts is diametrical to what is recommended in the works by Stramagioli and Kelly. Roughly speaking, roughly speaking, for the implementation of dirty derivatives, or the dynamic extension proposed by Stramagioli, the spring that decouples the damper is usually chosen as stiff as possible, such that the behavior of the dynamic extension in a good approximation can be thought of as if there was no decoupling spring at all. However, for reducing the control effort during impacts, the opposite is favorable, as argued in our paper. In such scenarios, we want the decoupling spring to have a stiffness as low as possible. 
in our work, the enhanced damping designs have been experimentally evaluated on a dedicated SEA testbed that is implemented with an LWR3 motor unit and an elastic element from the DLR robot C-Runner. The following experiments compare two implementations. In the first scenario, the robot links are interconnected with the classic PD element. And in the second scenario, the robot links are interconnected with a dynamic extension as shown here. For a single joint, the resulting closed loop behavior looks like this for the first scenario. And for the second scenario, the closed loop behavior with the dynamic extension is as shown here. This scene shows the natural oscillatory behavior of the test bed. The following experiment compares the set point regulation behavior of the two implementations shown at the beginning. Further, the effect of motor inertia shaping is demonstrated. As we can see, the dynamic extension implementation allows for a well damped set point regulation behavior with a performance comparable to the classic PD implementation. The following experiment shows the interaction of the link with the environment. The link is commanded to follow a sinusoidal trajectory leading to an unplanned collision with the end stop. Each controller is tested with and without multi inertia shaping. Notice with the new damping design, the control input spike at the moment of impact is significantly reduced. We can also see that the control input is significantly less noisy. The last experiment shows the robustness of the new damping design. Even when the control input saturates during very hard impacts, the system remains stable. In conclusion, the enhanced damping designs substantially reduce the required actuator torques at the moment of impact. They achieve a link side damping injection without the feedback of jerk signals. They achieve a satisfactory set point regulation behavior and a well damped interaction behavior. See also in the paper, please. Further, these dynamic extensions reduce the link sensor noise amplification and due to the passive closed loop design, the impact energy is properly dissipated. In future work, we, ex we aim to extend the presented control concept to motion tracking. Thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me.